Uh, we'll start with Guard Duty, uh, which is the threat detection and monitoring service. And uh, it's S3 protection. Uh, key to note, S3 protection was added to the service in July of 2020. Um, so if you turned on Guard Duty in your accounts after that date, you automatically had the S3 protection enabled. However, we did obviously have a large number of customers who were using the service prior to that. And for those customers, you do need to turn on uh, S3 protection in your accounts in order for that to start. Uh, every new account that you do turn on uh, will will get the first 30 days of S3 protection uh, free as a free trial. So you'll be able to see your cost. Uh, we've also made this very, very easy to enable. So first you wanna make sure you're using the delegated administrator functionality that we have that integrates with organizations. Uh, and that'll allow us to go and with a single button click, enable S3 protection on all your accounts. So you can do your enable all. And we'll also have uh, the auto enable turned on. So this means going forward, uh, when new accounts join your organization, they'll automatically have Guard Duty enabled and they'll automatically have the S3 protection. So just for, for existing customers who may have been using the service since uh, prior to this release, one of the first steps you want to do is make sure that you enable the S3 protection across all of your accounts. You can also view that uh, kind of setting here in the accounts page where it will show you whether or not uh, S3 protection is turned on. Once you uh, enable the S3 protection, what this is going to do is we're going to now start monitoring the S3 data events behind the scenes uh, without having to turn on data events on your buckets, which is really important from a costing perspective. So we're accessing the data directly from the data source, similar to how we access CloudTrail and flow logs for our standard uh, data sources without having to enable those. So I want to walk through a couple different of the finding types that you, you'll start to see that are focused on uh, protecting S3. So the first one we'll talk about is related to a policy violation. And this, this actually comes with standard guard duty from a control plane finding, but it's very relative to S3 because we're looking for whether or not a bucket was made public. There's lots of services uh, that do detect uh, whether or not a bucket was made public. S3 shows you in the console. Security Hub also has rules for this, and, and so does Macy. But we also figure there's different consumers. And a lot of times the guard duty consumer is, is focused on the security team and they might be very interested in this data. So we include it here as well. So the first thing you'll see is it tells me who, who did this action, uh, which bucket was made public, and uh, from where that uh, activity came from, from a, an IP perspective. And we're determining whether or not a bucket is made public using the same automated reasoning that is used in, in S3 console through Zolkova to uh, evaluate the bucket policy or sort of bucket ACLs and come up with a verdict as to whether or not the effective set of those policy changes makes the bucket public. Uh, the next finding time I want to talk about is really focused on those data events. So typical CloudTrail doesn't include uh, S3 data plane events like get, list, put, or delete objects. And so when you turn on the S3 protection, these are the types of events that we start to monitor on your different buckets. There is a learning period where we're going to start profiling all of your buckets, all of your users in your account, and really understand what roles interact with different buckets, like which which roles or which principles do we normally see interacting with specific buckets? Uh, from where, uh, which methods do they use to access those buckets? What is their typical read and write patterns? And as we build this profile, we're then able to call out and identify anomalies in the data that are unusual based on the historical patterns. So in this case, uh, you can see I had a user in my account that accessed one of my test buckets. Um, this bucket is a private bucket, it's not public. And I was doing a large number of Git object calls that were sourced out of Indonesia, which uh, is unusual for me because I actually live here in Seattle. Uh, so this was my account. It was all of a sudden accessing a large number of objects from different locations that was not normal. So this generates an uh, unusual uh, object read finding. There are other finding types that look at different activities like uh, deletes or lists for discovery purposes. But I did want to highlight the kind of data exfiltration use case in this one. Uh, another uh, part of protecting S3 is also still looking at that control plane. And these are some very recent enhancements to our machine learning models for control plane analysis to S3, as well as to other APIs. But we'll focus here on, on what I was doing, which is relative to S3 APIs. And this uses uh, our, some very advanced machine learning models that looks at session of events to understand and kind of come up with whether, whether or not the activity in there is sufficiently unusual to warrant an investigation. So in this case, 
uh, you can see it, I actually had some unsuccessful and some successful requests. And this is another piece of the enhancement that came with these new machine learning models is we're not just looking at individual atomic events, we're looking at a batch of events over a session in a period of time and evaluating uh, them together. And then showing you in the finding which events were successful, which ones were not successful. These were the two APIs in that session that were considered anomalous. But I can also go and view what do I normally see this user do? And what do I normally see other users in the account do? So you can see that this, this account, this particular principle, normally doesn't call uh, put, uh, put bucket policy or delete bucket policy. It's unusual for, for this user. It's also unusual for the entire account, which is one of the reasons why these ticker APIs were anomalous. We'll also show you what other behavior we considered unusual. And in this case, uh, like I said, the APIs were unusual, but so was the location it came from and so was the tool that was used. So normally I don't use this LI tool. Uh, normally also I, I don't come from that location that this came in from. So all these things together help under give you as a, a consumer of this from a security perspective, a lot of context and information to understand whether or not I need to take this anomaly finding and do a more in-depth uh, investigation.